I want you all to picture the scene. You've built the most perfect event-driven system. You've got publishers publishing, subscribers subscribing. Everything is magical. Any service across your entire organization has got access to any piece of data in any event. Your system is truly, truly extensible. Until, of course, the horrible A word comes along. Yep. It's the audit. It's audit time. The auditors come in and they want to know exactly who has access to all the different pieces of data inside your organization. And then, well, it's time to panic because you don't actually know that. Because remember, you've just got producers producing, consumers consuming, and none of these systems actually know that each other exist. And even more subtly, what about if you're just publishing data in your events that would be considered sensitive? Imagine you're building a customer service, managing people's customer data. Well, that's pretty damn sensitive. And you want to make sure that other services inside your organization can't access that personal information, but you do want to share it with some specific services. How do you manage all of these different considerations inside an event-driven system? And that's exactly what you're going to learn in this video today, how you can improve the security posture of your event-driven system to ensure that only the services that you need to access the data can actually access it. Let's get into it. And the place I actually want to start with this is with this idea of thick versus thin events. So imagine you've got your two systems. You've got your producer here and you've got your consumer over here and you've got some kind of message channel in the middle. Now there's a previous video which should appear above my head somewhere right now covering the idea of thick versus thin events. And this can be a really powerful strategy to make sure that only services have access to data that you want them to. Because if you publish a thin event, let's imagine that same customer scenario. If you publish an event that only contains the customer ID. When this service here consumes that event from your message channel, they only have access to the customer ID. They have no additional information. And then as a producer, you could simply expose some kind of internal API that the consumer can then make a call back to. And now because you've only got some kind of restful API, you can get into all the common ways of authorizing HTTP requests. You can use JWT, you could use API keys, you can use machine identities, you could use OIDC. You've got all these options that are really well understood for how to authorize that request that's coming back. That means you can then only allow specific services to have the ability to call back and get additional information. And if you couple this with the idea of public versus private events, again, another video floating around above my head somewhere, you can actually consume a private event inside your customer service and maybe you hydrate some kind of cache. That means when this callback comes back in, all you're doing is hitting a cache inside your service and you're not actually affecting the functionality of your main service. Service. So that's one option you have. And this is actually probably the simplest. Only ever expose thin events publicly, use callbacks, and then you can authorize the callbacks so that only certain services have access to the data. Simple, right? But what if for some reason you do need to pass a thicker event? So let's imagine, same scenario again, you've got your producer, you've got your consumer and your message channel in the middle. And what if you do want to start publishing more data inside your events? You want to reduce that requirement for callback. Maybe your system's getting overloaded with all the callbacks or there's some specific services inside your architecture that you just want them to have the data as part of the event. How can you manage that? So let's imagine that same scenario. You're publishing an event onto the event bus, and that event has a whole bunch of PII data in there. It's got customer names, it's got date of birth, it's got addresses, it's got all that stuff that you really don't want anybody to have access to. What you can do at the layer inside your customer service where you actually publish the data, you can encrypt specific fields of data. So you might publish the customer ID as the actual customer ID, one, two, three, four, five, but then you might publish the address, the date of birth, all these sensitive pieces of information as an encrypted string. That means that any consumer that consumes them only has some encrypted piece of data that they can't really do anything anything with. What you can then do is the key that you use to encrypt the data. Let's say you've got some kind of key, maybe that's in KMS, maybe that's in Key Vault, wherever you're holding that key. Your producing service has access to the key to be able to encrypt the data. And then you only give specific downstream services access to the key 
to be able to decrypt the data. So this service that you want to allow access to the data, they have access to the key to be able to decrypt. Maybe you've got another service here that you don't want to have access to the data. If they try and access that key, they get a decline. They can't decrypt them pieces of data. So now you've safely published PII data inside your events and you've used encryption to actually only allow certain services to be able to decrypt that data. So that's a second option you have. If you need to publish fatter events, if you need to publish entire pieces of data inside events, then ensuring you have some kind of encryption in place can be another way to do that. But there is a third option that you have here. Same scenario, you have a producer and you have a consumer. The third option you have is to manage this at an infrastructure level. So imagining you've got two separate message channels now. You've got what you would call a PII message channel, and you've got what you might call an other message channel. This separates sensitive data out into two completely separate infrastructure concerns. If this was on AWS, for example, you might have two separate Amazon EventBridge event buses. You might have two separate SNS topics. Then what you can do is at an IAM level inside your infrastructure, you can only allow certain services to have access to be able to create rules, create subscriptions on the specific message channels. So this service here would be allowed to create subscriptions on both channels, whereas this other additional service down here may only have permission to create rules or subscriptions on the generic, the other, the all events message channel. Now, this does give you a little bit more responsibility at an infrastructure level. You've got to manage these two independent buses. You need a team to control that. So actually, this is my least preferred option. My personal preference would always to be have one single bus and you either encrypt data or you prioritize thin events and you just don't expose that data in the first place. Because remember, one of the most surefire ways to ensure that you don't expose any data is to simply simply not expose that data in the first place. And this can be a really good argument for prioritizing thinner events, especially when you're publishing public events to other downstream services. Because if the data isn't there, it simply can't be exposed to a service that doesn't need it. Especially when you couple that with the idea of having some kind of write ahead cache at the point you publish that public event, you also write some data to a cache. So when them callbacks come back in, you're safe in the knowledge that you're not gonna overload your main service. Instead, all of them callbacks are redirected to some kind of cache. And when you couple that with modern services like Memento that allow you to implement fully serverless caches in just a few clicks, it becomes a really powerful way of building. So that's all for this video. That's a really quick look at some options that you have for making sure you have more data security inside your event of an architecture. Whether that's prioritizing thin events, using callbacks and securing things at a HTTP level, whether that's using encryption, including that sensitive data in your events, but encrypting it, and then only giving specific downstream services the ability to decrypt to access the key, or whether that's doing things at an infrastructure level and having two completely independent message channels and control controlling who can create rules, who can create subscriptions to them channels. Whichever option you choose, just make sure you think really, really carefully about any data that you put inside your events, because remember, any downstream service can potentially subscribe to and start processing them events. Now, a quick disclaimer just to finish off everybody. I have never actually worked personally inside a really highly regulated industry like healthcare or banking. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, James, that is not going to work inside healthcare. That is not going to work inside banking. I would love to hear from you. So please drop a message in the comments, reach out on social media. I'd love to hear why it is that this wouldn't work inside these more regulated industries and how you personally have managed these things in an event-driven system inside industries that might be slightly more regulated than your generic order processing system. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all in the next video.